Hi, I'm Nigel, developer of AudioSwift, and in this tutorial I'll show you how you can use a trackpad to add expression to your orchestra libraries and other virtual instruments. We'll go through the steps to set up AudioSwift in your computer, and in the end I'll share some tips to improve your workflow. So what is AudioSwift? AudioSwift for Mac OS is an app that transforms a trackpad or a MacBook trackpad into a touch MIDI controller. It has five different controller modes, and one of them, the slider mode, divides the trackpad into four sliders that can send control change messages, also called CC, to your virtual instruments. It works like any MIDI controller. AudioSwift creates three virtual MIDI inputs that connect to your DAW. The slider mode uses port 3. AudioSwift runs in the top menu bar waiting to be called. By using a four or five finger tap gesture over the trackpad, the console is turned on. A console window appears showing the current controller mode, freezing the mouse pointer and taking control of the computer keyboard inputs. Now we can send MIDI from the trackpad. When we finish, we press the escape key to turn AudioSwift off. This is a general workflow. AudioSwift is also automatically turned off if you move your mouse or touch the surface of a magic mouse or a secondary trackpad. Later on, I will show you another alternative to turn AudioSwift on and off. Download the latest version of AudioSwift by going to audioswiftapp.com, click the free trial button, and click download. Open the file and move the app to the application folder. We need to check the trackpad settings at the system preferences window before we start using AudioSwift. To check this, go to Apple, click system preferences, then trackpad and click more gestures. What we're looking here is to make sure there aren't any three finger swipe gestures assigned to the trackpad because it can cause conflicts with the app. Three finger taps can still be used. Check if there isn't a three finger swipe assigned here, 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 and here. If there is, please change it to a two or four finger swipes instead. When you finish, close the window. I created a shortcut in the dock. Let's launch AudioSwift. If you're using a Mac OS version below Mojave, the AudioSwift icon will appear to your right at the top menu bar. If you're running Mojave, Catalina, Big Sur, or above, AudioSwift requires your permission to control the computer. If we don't do this first, the app won't run. Once we launch AudioSuite for the first time, it will open this dialog box. Click Open System Preferences. It will take you to the Privacy tab under the Security and Privacy section. In case the dialog box doesn't appear automatically, go to Apple, System Preferences, Security and Privacy, and then Privacy tab. In the row Accessibility, we are going to add AudioSwift to the list. At the bottom, click the lock icon. You need to have administrator privilege in the computer to do this. Enter your password and click unlock. Click the add button if AudioSwift doesn't already appear in the list. Check AudioSwift and close the window. Launch AudioSwift again and the icon should appear in the top menu bar. Let's open the console window and click the top right star. This will leave the console to always be shown on screen. Change the controller mode to slider. Now open the trackpad window. This utility window will show us how the sliders are divided on the trackpad. By default, there are four. Once we get used to them, we don't need to have this window opened. For this tutorial, I'm going to work with Logic Pro. The AudioSwift MIDI ports in Logic Pro will be automatically enabled, but if you're using another DAW, make sure to enable them first in their preferences windows. 
For the software instrument, I'm going to use the BBC Symphony Orchestra Discover by Spitfire Audio. As many plugins from Spitfire Audio, the graphical interface has two sliders and one circular control to change the sounds of the instruments. All we need to do in the AudioSwift console is to match the same CC numbers used in the plugin. If you are using another virtual instrument, they probably use similar CC numbers. The first slider is expression. And when I do a right click, it says it uses CC11. The second slider is dynamics and uses CC1. The circular control is for the reverb and uses CC19. The AudioSwift console shows the settings for the four sliders. In the first slider, type the label expression. To the right of CC, change the CC number to 11. Leave these settings as they are. Click where it says regular and change the format to absolute. In the user guide, we go into the details about the differences between these formats. Now go to the next slider and type dynamics. Change the CC to one. Again, change the format to absolute. For the third slider, instead of using the word reverb, I'm going to type general. Change the CC to 19 and the format to absolute. The last slider is going to be used as pitch pen. Click CC and choose pitch pen. Everything is set up. Select your track and arm its record button. Activate AudioSwift with a four finger tap and start moving the sliders. The corresponding plugin parameter should start moving. When you finish, press escape. Let's record something. Press record or use your key shortcut. Then activate AudioSwift with a four fingers tap. Play something with your MIDI keyboard and use the trackpad to control expression and dynamics. Hit escape when you finish to turn AudioSwift off and then stop recording. Here are some tips you can use to improve your workflow. Tip number one, while AudioSwift is activated, you can use your regular key shortcuts to control your DAW. This happens because AudioSwift becomes the key application on screen and the DAW goes to the background. At this moment, AudioSwift is receiving all the computer keyboard inputs. There is a workaround to enable some keys as transport control shortcuts for record, play, and stop. We only need to configure AudioSwift as a Mackie controller using the mixer mode. The steps for doing this with your specific DAW are in the mixer mode section of the user guide and as video tutorials in our tutorial section. Once you configure the mixer mode, when AudioSwift is on, pressing the R key will start recording and the space bar will play and stop the playhead. Tip number two, there are alternative ways to turn AudioSwift on and off. Go to AudioSwift, Preferences, General tab. Here we can choose to turn AudioSwift on using a four finger tap, five finger tap, or a hotkey. If you're using a secondary input device like a mouse, trackball, or another trackpad, try checking Enable Trackpad to automatically turn AudioSwift on. What this setting does is to allow you to activate AudioSwift by just touching the trackpad and deactivate it when moving the mouse pointer with another input device. All you need to do is call AudioSwift once at launch with a four or five fingers tap. And from there, it will be activated when you just touch the trackpad. Another way to turn AudioSwift on temporarily is to press the shift key immediately after the four fingers tap. AudioSwift will be on until we release the shift key. The setting turn AudioSwift off automatically will deactivate AudioSwift if no fingers are touching the trackpad. Tip number three. There are other options in the console window. We can choose the number of sliders in the trackpad. We can set a different group of sliders in another bank. 
use keyboard shortcuts C, X, comma, and period to jump between banks. Set a different MIDI channel for the controller. And this setting here allows the slider to return to a default value. Set the value and click the triangle. Turn audio shift on with a four fingers tap Touch the slider and when we lift the finger, the controller will jump back to the default value. With trackpads that support force touch, applying pressure will send after touch MIDI messages. Tip number four. In the preferences window general tab, select slider as the default controller mode when audio launches. Also choose another color theme for the console. In the slider and XY tab, enable use relative pitch bend center. This changes the zero pitch bend to the position of the first touch on the trackpad. Tip number five. Because of technical reasons, AudioSwift becomes the key app on screen when it's called and the DAW goes to the background. There are four DAWs that will hide any floating plugin window when this happens. Ableton Live, Bitwit Studio, Studio One, and Cubase. The only DAW of the four that has a workaround to avoid this behavior is Cubase. In the plugin window, go to the top right corner and make sure always on top is unchecked. When you call AudioSwift, the plugin window will not go away. Tip number six. Logic Pro has a feature called Automation Quick Access to easily map a slider to any parameter on a track. And Ableton Live also have a way to instantly map the sliders in AudioSwift to the macros. I have tutorials explaining the steps to set up these two features in Logic Pro and Ableton Live. I put the links in the description section below. Tip number seven. Once you get used to the slider mode, try one of the other four controller modes. The mixer mode gives you quick access to the faders and panning of your tracks. The trigger mode lets you make beats, play chords, or play notes with MIDI polyphonic expression or MP. If you ever wanted to try MP, AudioSwift gives you a grid style MP controller right in your trackpad. Very useful for creating evolving soundscapes. The scale mode lets you play notes horizontally in a given scale. And the XY mode transforms the trackpad into an XY pad to control several synth parameters in three dimensions. That's it for this video. I hope you liked this tutorial. Thanks for watching.